Hey again from the garden, it's Christina from Sunshine and Flora. So it's the morning before my weekly farmer's market and I am out here harvesting a majority of my cut flowers. So I thought it would be a perfect time to film a video for you guys on how I harvest certain varieties of cut flowers. Now I have done a lot of harvest videos throughout the summer, but I have never specifically slowed down and explained how I harvest each variety of cut flower. So in this video, I wanna share with you guys four main focal flowers that I'm harvesting this time of year along with a few fillers. So I will be going over how I harvest sunflowers, zinnias, dahlias, and snapdragons. So the first variety that I want to explain to you guys are dahlias. And dahlias are more of a late season summer bloomer for me. I'm in zone 5A in Northwest Iowa. They are just starting to put on a lot of buds as you can see in front of me. You also may notice that I have some organza bags over top of these. I am having trouble with some bugs right now and they are specifically going for the dahlias. And so by putting organza bags over top of the buds, that keeps the bugs off and then I have nice healthy blooms when I want to harvest them. So most of my dahlias are still too early to harvest but I have one really beautiful one down here that's in the perfect stage so I want to show you guys how I harvest that. All right, so look at this beautiful dahlia. This is a variety called Night Silence. I have never grown this variety before, but I love the dark foliage of it, and that flower is absolutely beautiful. Now, I did not cover this with an organza bag, so you can see on some of these outer petals, there is a little bit of bug damage. Um, so I need to get the rest of these buds covered morning but I'm still gonna harvest this one and at least use it for myself because it's so beautiful now this one is attached to another stem that has a bud and so I'm just gonna go ahead and clip that whole stem this bud and everything and dahlias when you harvest them they are not going to open much more in the vase after you harvest them and so you want to make sure that they are open as far as possible but not too far open and you do that by looking at the petals on the back of the dahlia so these petals are still nice and healthy um, when I kind of ruffle them none of them flake off so I know that this is a really good stage to harvest this dahlia so I'm gonna cut it all the way down here right at the intersection where this other branch is coming up and while this isn't a super long stem this is long enough that it'll fit in a nice short vase or I could use this in one of my mini bouquets for the market. So on the back here you can see these petals are still nice and healthy. None of them are browning, none of them are flaking off. So this is a great stage to harvest this dahlia. All right, let's move on to my zinnia patch. Okay, so I'm over in my zinnia patch and zinnias are one of the main focal flowers that I've been using in my market bouquets throughout the month of August. And as you can see, they are growing really well. They're really starting to put on some good height. And these are the Benneries Giant varieties. I'm growing mainly the Benneries Giant varieties this year. Um, I think this is the deep purple. I have some orange in here. This is either the scarlet or the wine. Um, I think this might be the scarlet, but anyway, they are just a beautiful flower. They get really nice big blooms and they also are very powdery mildew resistant, which is great for me because we have a lot of humidity throughout the summer. But when you harvest zinnias, you have to make sure that they are far enough along so that they don't droop after you harvest them. So I like to do the wiggle test. So I'm pretty sure these are far enough along. So I'm just gonna wiggle with the stem and see how that bloom does not move. All of these are staying very straight up and down when I wiggle them. So these are all gonna get harvested. Now this orange one over here, I can tell there's still some petals that are left to open, but by doing the wiggle test, I know that this one is not gonna be ready. See how the top of that just wobbles back and forth? If I were to pick this, it would droop right over and it would not survive the bouquet. So you wanna make sure that your stems are nice and sturdy before you harvest them. And then when I actually go to cut these, I wanna cut down you know, a decent amount so that I get um, nice long stems rejuvenating after harvesting these. So I like to cut down, I mean that, that's okay, but I could actually cut down deeper. Let me cut down deeper on this one. So see how nice and long that is? Yes, I'm losing a couple blooms here, but where I cut it was at an intersection. And so 
I'm gonna get some nice stems just growing really rapidly right from where I cut those. I'll cut these nice and tall. This one is a little bit far gone, so I'm probably just gonna compost that one. But four out of five of these are great. There we go. Those are so pretty. Now this one that's a little far gone, on the back I can see that the petals are starting to brown a little bit. It also has a little bit of bug, da bug damage. So I'm just gonna go ahead and compost, but these five are absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to strip the leaves off of these, put them in a bucket of water, and they'll be good for my market bouquets tomorrow. One other thing about zinnias, I always put them in a bucket by themselves because zinnias have a tendency to make the water dirty very quickly. So I like to put them in their own bucket. I also do not put zinnias in the fridge because that will damage them. All of my other cut flowers I put in the fridge. Um, basil I do not put in the fridge. Uh, basil and zinnias I do not put in the fridge. The rest of them are okay to go in the fridge. All right, let's move over to the sunflowers. So I came into the garden this morning and overnight I had a bunch of these sunflowers open which is perfect timing because some of them are in different stages and I can show you exactly what the perfect stage is that I like to harvest sunflowers. So these are either the um, Pro Cut Orange or the Pro Cut Brilliance. I'm not quite sure but they're that nice um, you know orange petal dark center this one is actually a little far along from where I like to harvest them. I will still use it in a bouquet, but it just won't last quite as long as, say, a variety like this. Um, now this, the petals have lifted off the face, but they have not started to fan open yet. This is the stage that I like to harvest my sunflowers at. But this one I will totally use in a bouquet tomorrow. So I have quite a few sunflowers to harvest this morning. I'm gonna harvest these and then I'll show you how many leaves I actually clip off the sunflowers. All right, so here's one of the sunflowers that I just harvested. Now I like to strip all of the leaves off and I just do that with my hand. And then when it gets closer to the top, I like to take these leaves off, but I prefer to use my clippers. And these are Felco's. I just get a little nervous pulling these off with my hand because I don't want to damage the neck of the sunflower, so I just come in real tight and clip those off. I like a nice clean sunflower without any of the leaves. So this again is the perfect stage that I like to harvest the sunflowers. I also like to cut the end of the stem at an angle because that helps soak up water better. So this will go in the fridge overnight and will be perfect in my market bouquets for the week. Okay, so the last main focal flower that I want to share with you guys today are snapdragons. And I have been harvesting snapdragons nonstop from early summer all the way through now. Now, they are not as prolific as they were earlier in the summer, but they definitely are constantly reblooming and giving me stems to use every single week in my bouquets. And I grow a lot of the Potomac series. They give a nice, sturdy stem and really tall blooms. And when you harvest snapdragons, you want to harvest them when they're a third to halfway open. If you wait any longer than that and let them open most of the way, they're going to already be pollinated and some of the lower petals are going to start to die off. After they're pollinated, they don't last as long. So this is about the perfect stage that I like to harvest my snapdragons. Here's another Potomac one. This is the Potomac Royal, one of my absolute favorites. This also is in the perfect stage. And I like to cut snapdragons as low as possible. Now, I obviously don't need that long of a stem in a bouquet, so I will probably clip it, you know, somewhere that's more suiting. But if I cut it all the way down, that is going to help when the plant rejuvenates to give long stems again. If I cut it where I needed it, you know, right about here, this is where it's going to branch at, and those stems are just gonna be way too short the next time around, which is probably what happened with this one. But this is the perfect stage to harvest, and you want nice long stems. All right, I wanna go ahead and show you a few of the filler and accent flowers that I'm harvesting right now and what stage I harvest those. 
So this is my patch of status, and status is one of my favorite fillers to use this time of year, not only for fresh bouquets, but I really like to dry it for dried flowers. And with status, you wanna make sure that um, the blooms on them are fully open, otherwise they definitely will wilt right away. And so uh, with this particular variety of status, I can tell that they're fully open because they get um, little white specks in them, and I'll put a close up on the screen. I planted a whole variety of status and they're all from Johnny's, um, but these, you can definitely tell when they're fully open and then these get little white specks and there's not much to take off of the stems of status. They do have a few little leaves, so I just like to pull those off, but they are pretty easy to cut and clean. And with status, you definitely wanna cut them all the way down to the ground because if you've ever seen a status plant, it's just kind of big round flat plant of leaves, but these grow straight up out of the center. So you wanna cut them all the way at the base and then they will rejuvenate from there. Ageratum is another cute little filler accent flower that I really like to use throughout the summer. And this pole patch is just really starting to rejuvenate. So I have a lot of nice new growth. Now with Ageratum, I also do the wiggle test. This one right in front of me, the head just wobbles back and forth like that orange zinnia. That is not ready to harvest. This one and this one are a little more sturdy, but still not quite as far as I want them to be. I'm gonna let these go another day or two and they will be perfect. But with Ageratum, you wanna do the wiggle test just like you do on Zinnias. So the last plant that I wanna talk about today in this video is Celosia. And as you can see, my patch of Celosia is absolutely exploding right now. I love the texture of Celosia in my market bouquets, but you definitely have to make sure that you wait long enough to harvest it. So I have a few new blooms of Celosia here. This is the Flamingo Feather, and you also want to do the wiggle test with Celosia. These are just moving way too much for me to harvest. I need to let these go a little longer. Now this stem in the foreground, oh, that's still a little wobbly. Okay, here's a really good example. I'm gonna zoom in on this one for you. So this is a variety called Selway White. See when I wiggle this, how they stay nice and straight and don't move. These I could harvest for a cut flower bouquet. Now a couple of these down in here are a little too far along and actually are starting to do seeds. So I would just clip that off in the middle and now that looks a lot more fresh. So I would definitely be able to harvest this stock and put it right in the center of my bouquet. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing what I'm currently harvesting in the garden and how I harvest them. I hope this was helpful. And of course, stay tuned for a lot more cut flower content for the rest of the season. I'm really hoping we have a nice long fall and a late frost so that I can get as many flowers out of this garden as possible. So stay tuned, we'll see you soon.